Good morning, everyone, and good morning, good morning, as you brothers and sisters are coming into the live chat room. Yes, yes, y'all, we got to talk about this. Today's topic is called the fear of the Lord in the church. As you brothers and sisters are coming into the live chat room, welcome. This is Footwork Ministries. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I have a lot of content on my TikTok page that you guys can check out. So when you get when you guys and ladies get a chance, add me as his friend on here. Check out the content. I also have my website on there. You can check it out in the bio description, www.footworkministries.com. I have written nine books for the Lord. They are all free to read and download, all right? Also, check out the podcast ministry on SoundCloud, Footwork Podcast, um, where you guys can check out prayer albums, prayer recordings that I've recorded for the Lord, so you guys can use that in your spiritual warfare endeavors, Okay. If your brothers and sisters coming into the chat room, let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to congregate this morning. We thank you, Father God. We invite your presence in this video. We invite your presence in this room right now. We invite your presence wherever these brothers and sisters may be at, whether they're at home, whether they're at work, whether they're at school, whatever they may be doing, Father God, we invite your presence in this congregation. You said when two or more come together in your name, you are there. Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will guide your servant, Neil, in preaching what it is that you need him to preach this morning to the congregation. Father God, whatever you need us to talk about, Father God, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, I I ask that you put a hedge of protection over this video, over the message, over the messenger, and those who are covered in the blood of Jesus right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, brothers and sisters, let's get to it. If you guys got your Bibles, go to Proverbs chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 22. Okay, so if you have your Bibles, I have a King James Bible. So if you, for those who want to know what Bible I'm using, Holy Bible, King James Version. Right, um, go to book of Proverbs chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 22. And it says, How long, ye simple ones, Will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and the fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit onto you and I will make known my words unto you because I have called and ye have refused. I have I have stretched out my hand and no man is regarded. But you but ye have set at naught all my counsel. And would have none of my reproofs. I will also laugh at your calamity. And I will also mock at your when your fear cometh. This is very important because this is the scripture that God wanted me to talk about today. Especially dealing with the body of Christ. So we're going to read it over again. But just want to get into the groove of things. He says, how long ye simple ones will you love simplicity? So those who are in the body of Christ who are looking for blessings. Claim it and name it, you know, always worrying about their needs instead of the father's needs, worrying about what they're going to get from walking with God instead of just walking with God. This message is for you because for the last couple of days, I've been noticing a lot of warfare in the body of Christ. I've been noticing a lot of debates on here. I'm not going to get into names and details of names, but I've been seeing a lot of people in the body of Christ contesting against one another and then we have people in the comment section of these people who are contesting against one another like you choosing one side or you choosing another side and I have to check that because it really grieved my heart it's like okay what is people seeing that what is people not seeing that I'm seeing and what I'm seeing is like this division this strife this confusion in the body of Christ. People are more concerned about following Pacific TikTokers who may put out Christian content because yeah, they said something I like. I like the way how this brother preach or I like the way how this, t- this sister teach. But it's not about that. What is the most important thing that you come on TikTok to do? To learn, right? 
So if you come on TikTok to get information and you come on TikTok to learn about God, especially if you guys are struggling with your walk with God, you cannot expect everybody on here to have perfect doctrine. You can't expect everybody on here to have all the answers. And this is why I tell people all the time, if you come to me asking me for help, I just want you to know that that is that is a 50-50 chance I may help you depending if the Lord wants me to help you or that other 50% may be, I may not have the answers. You're asking the wrong person or the Lord may not want me to help you because the Lord sees ahead of me. I don't know you. I know that a lot of people may be coming in the chat room. So I don't know you. You don't know me. But you see, when we start idolizing people in the body of Christ, we start idolizing certain teachers, certain pastors, just because they said a good word, you are you are neglecting the most important command. It says you should not have no other gods before me for I am the Lord your God. Why did Jesus Christ said he will send you the comforter who will guide and lead you into all the truth? You see what I'm saying? If the Holy Spirit is the comforter, he's the spirit of truth. He said he will guide and lead you into all the truth. He said you don't need a man to teach you. Now I understand we have teachers who are in the body of Christ. When you're born again of the water and of the spirit, you are a member in the body of Christ. So yes, you need a preacher to hear the word. It says faith comes by hearing the word. But a lot of you guys just come on here just to hear a word, but you don't practice what you heard. It says do not just be hearers of the word, deceiving yourself, but be ye doers of the word. So that means whatever you hear in this video today, Brothers and sisters, it is very important that you go out there and practice what you heard. Don't just be a hearer of this word. You said, let's play for the victims of the vaccine. That's not the topic of this video. If that comes up in the prayer, we'll pray about that. But I need you to focus on today's video. Today's topic is about the fear of the Lord. Not about people who took the, the, the jab. None of that. All right, wrong platform for that. See what I'm saying? I want you to focus on what the Lord wants you to focus on. And that is the problem with the body of Christ. Everybody's coming on here asking for prayers. Everybody's coming on here asking for their needs of their situation. Like you're not the only person on here. I'm sorry I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to be rude, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you. All right. I have family that took that too. I have friends that took that too, but that's not important. The most important thing is Jesus Christ. When you put Christ the first thing in your life, the first thing when you do when you get up in the morning, you put Christ before yourself. You put Christ before your needs. Why? Because God will suffice your needs. God will protect you. God will guide you. He will give you instructions. He will give you the wisdom. He will give you the understanding on how to go about those situations which you're complaining about. But if you're going to come to one man and expect that I'm supposed to have the answers or you come to one person on here and like, oh, if this guy don't pray for me or this woman don't pray for me, they're a false prophet. I'm sorry. You could call me whatever you like. I'm going to stick to the word and what the word says. He says, how long ye simple ones will you love simplicity? What is the simplicity? I just want somebody to pray for me. Not saying that's something wrong with that. There's a time and place for that. That's what I want you to understand. I'm not saying if you ask somebody to pray for you, it's something wrong with that. I just want you to understand there's a time and place for that. Alright? It's... Oh, I need a blessing. There's nothing wrong with asking God for blessing. It says, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added on to you. But you're not listening to the first part. You just see the last part, which is what? The blessings. You care more about the side effect, more about the person who caused the side effect. You're more, you're more focused on the effect versus the cause. Because I walk with Christ, the blessings will follow. Because I'm obedient to Christ, the blessings will follow. Because I'm obedient to Christ, his glory is on my life. His, his, his power is on my life. His spirit is on my life. His protection. Everything else will follow if you just follow Christ. What did he say? Deny yourself. 
pick up your cross and follow him. If you put your needs before him, do you want Christ or do you want what he has? It's that simple. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just being real. It, it might come off as being arrogant. It may come off as being, oh, you, you, you don't care about his brother. And it's not that I don't. It's just that what you're talking about is irrelevant to God. Because God is all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He knows all things. He knows how to handle your situation better than I can. And I'm just being honest with you. You guys want a y'all guys want a sugar-coated gospel. You guys want somebody to tell you that they love you every single day. But if somebody was to tell you that they love you every single day, but you're not you're not able to receive that. That's just affirmations. So y'all just want somebody to affirm your lifestyle. You just want somebody to affirm your bad behaviors. You just want somebody to affirm your sinful lifestyles. God said he chastened those who he loves. So correction, conviction is the way how the Holy Spirit loves us. So when he pulls you to the side and say, hey, I don't think you should be doing that. Hey, you're living wrong. You're not living right. You need to get it in order. Stop living in fornication. Stop living in same-sex relationships. Stop, stop, stop using drugs. You guys are say, no, you're judging me. No. No, that's not of love, brother. You didn't come with love, brother. Let's read what the scripture says. Let's go to um, Proverbs chapter 2. Let's start at verse... No, no, chapter 3, my bet. Let's start at verse 2, um, verse 12. It says, For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father the son in whom he delighted. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom... And the man that get it understanding. Let me read that one more time. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 12 and 13. You guys can put it in the chat room. It says, for whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. So if you talk about Jesus' love. Oh, God is love. God is mercy. God is grace. We know that. But what does the Bible say? It says, for whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. So when you're getting that feeling of conviction when somebody speaks the word of God. If a pastor, a brother, a sister comes on here and they preach the gospel and it's convicting the lifestyle that you're living that is fraudulent, that is not of God, that is the love of God. You're not used to that love because you are used to the love of the world. You're used to somebody affirming your lifestyle. You are, you are used to somebody telling you you look good, girl, even though you know you don't look good. You you used to somebody telling you, yo, man, you the man, bro. Even though they people, those same people that saying you the man, they talking behind your back, bro. See, God gonna call it for what it is. Because he wants to set the captive free. If he sees that you're living in bondage, you're living in sin, you're living in death, he wants to free you from that. But the only way he can free you from that is that he has to bring you the truth. Now, the truth is the light. Now, what did the Bible say? The Bible says that men hate the light. For their deeds be exposed. It says men hate the life. No, I mean hate the light for their deeds be exposed. So let's go back to verse 12. It says, For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father the son in whom he delighted. So do not despise correction. Do not despise conviction from the Holy Spirit. That is God knocking at the door of your heart. Let him in. Humble yourself. Let's keep reading. Let's go back to chapter 1. Right? And this started at verse 23. It says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit onto you. So when you hear that conviction, that's God pouring out his spirit to you. He's like, I'm giving you my grace. I'm giving you my mercy. Are you able to receive it? So the more you're able to receive correction from the Holy Spirit, the more you're able to receive correction from Jesus Christ, the more you're able to walk in his love, walk in obedience, walk in his spirit. Right. So it says, I will make known my words unto you. How? Read the scriptures. You don't you guys come on here for prophetic word every single day. You got some of you guys that come on here. Y'all just want to hear a good word. The Lord told you this and the Lord said this. Stop with all this. The Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. If I need a word from God, I'm going to go to God himself. 
And if I'm not hearing from God for some reason, I'm trying to talk to God and I'm not able to hear from God. The, the next thing I need to know if I can hear from God is his word. This is always accessible to me. His written word. I don't need a new word when it's his written word. All I got to do is get in the presence of God so I can get into his word. Okay, God, do you have a word for me? I'm tired of going on TikTok. I'm tired of listening to content creators. Let me get into the word. So when you get into the word, he might, he might pull out a scripture. That word might stand out to you. That word might, ref, might you know, appear to you as, oh, man, that's the, that's the thing I need right now. Let me meditate on that. Let me meditate on that. So when he says, I will make known my word unto you, you need to listen and be obedient to that. It says, because I have called and ye have refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man has regarded. So numerous times God reached out to you guys and y'all don't want to hear. Numerous times God has reached out to you and you have rejected his hand countless of times. But God is long-suffering. God is merciful. He wished none shall perish, but all shall come to repentance and all shall be what? Saved. Okay? But he says, ye have said at naught. Naught means nothing. That's the old English. He says, but ye have said at naught all my counsel and none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity and I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind and when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Because you rejected God's counsel, when you have calamity in your life, when you have stress and things that's going on bad in your life, when you're going to now seek the Lord for advice, guess what? The Lord is not going to answer you. Because how many times has God knocked on the door of your heart and you have rejected the call? How many times have you knocked on the door? How many times have he knocked on the door of your heart and you said, I don't want to hear that gospel. I don't believe in Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus Christ is not real. Every time somebody preached the gospel to you, brothers and sisters, as an opportunity to repent. So God is showing his love. God is showing his grace. God is showing his mercy. But it's only for so long. So when you're really in trouble now and you really need to find God, he's nowhere to be found. Why? What did he say? Verse 28. Then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Now, what is the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Everybody's always looking for love from Christ. But nobody's not looking to be under that obedience. You call him Lord, but you don't do what he tell you to do. You understand? You just want him to save you from your trouble. When he saves you from your trouble, then you go right back to the same vomit he just saved you from. You go right back to the same lifestyle he just delivered you from. And all of us are guilty of that, myself included. It's only when you in some there, when you in a situation where it's life or death, it's a transitional process where you have to make a very important decision. And you need that guidance or assistance. That's when you're seeking the Lord. That's when you're trying to get in good grace with God. You see what I'm saying? But he says, for they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Verse 30. He says, they would none of my counsel. They despise all of my reproof. Now, what is reproof? Correction. Let's go back to verse 12 of chapter 3. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. So every time that the Lord corrects you, it is the reproof. It is the rebuke. It's the correction. But you reject that. So therefore, now when you're looking for the Lord, he's nowhere to be found because you rejected him continually. 
You keep rejecting them. Every opportunity somebody comes on here and preach the word or gospel to you, you guys are rejecting it. You guys are rejecting it. Right? You said I will never fear anyone because I'm all that I got. You just proved my point. It says the Lord corrected who he loves. You just think about yourself. What is the title of this video? It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. You're not the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. If you had all the answers, then there would be no need to watch me. Right? The saying. You need to humble yourself. You, you need to humble yourself. To whoever that is, you need to humble yourself and acknowledge that you don't have all the answers. And if you don't have all the answers, you need to go seek all the You need to seek the answers from a person that's higher than you. Now, that person that's higher than you is Jesus Christ. Why? Because he is the Lord and Savior of your life. Not only that, he is God of all things. So if he has knowledge of all things, he's creator of all things. It's, it, it is the wisest, most logical decision to make. I am the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Any other way is a thief and a robber. So if you think that you're the way, then you're out of, your, you're out of sync with God. And you will perish in your sins. You said, I'm very humble down to earth. Yeah, I never met you. you are, we could agree on that. I don't know if you're down to earth. And I don't know if you're humble. I'm, I'm Just by you saying what you said, I don't think you're humble. Are you not humble as the way you think you are? Because all of us, we can, say, we, we can always sit here and say, oh, I'm a good person. I do this for the homeless. Or I do this for people. I'm good to my kids. That is not the truth. I don't care how much good things I've done. I don't care how much good things you've done. If you do not accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're not entering into heaven. What does the Bible says? It says those it says those who are not born again of the water and of the spirit cannot enter into heaven. So if you think you're gonna enter into heaven because you say that you're humble, you're not more humble than God. You could sit there and say, Okay, I'm the most peaceful, loving person, brother. Okay, but you're not more peaceful than God. See what I'm saying? It says everyone is fall short of the glory of God. No one is perfect before God. It is only by his grace that we are saved. I'm going to actually help you out, brother. I don't know if you... Because I, I see you said fan of who? Are you a male or female? You can put that in the chat room. Are you a male or female? Because I'm going to actually give you a scripture that can help you out. I know you're a human. I hope, I hope that you're human. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're saying I'm a human. Like, I'm trying to help you out. You know what I mean? Like, let me give you a scripture real quick. Right? So, all right, I got it. Give, give me a second. Ba, ba, ba. You, okay, there we go. This is Galatians chapter 2, right? This started verse 16. Perfect. I'm not going to mute you just yet. I want you to actually participate. But I, I appreciate you. This, I want you to put this down, right? Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. This is your homework. You think that you're saved by your works. And let's see what the Bible says about that. It says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we may be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no, fish, no flesh be justified. Let me say that one more time. You are not justified by your works. You're not justified by your good deeds. I don't care if you say that you're humble. I don't care if you say I help the homeless. It says what? Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. You say, okay, if that be the case, then why threaten me with hell? Nobody's not threatening you with hell. 
people are warning you about hell. See, that's the difference. The difference is I'm warning you about something that you're going to experience. All of us have to experience when we leave this body. So when we die and we go, we go in front of God, you're either faced with two choices. If you accepted Jesus Christ in your lifetime as your personal Lord and Savior and you made him the Lord and Savior of your life, then you are able to enter into heaven because it's only through him that we are saved and not by ourselves. But if you did not accept Jesus Christ, but you want to rely on your works and your goodness to get into heaven, when you stand in front of God on judgment day, by your free will, this is not even God trying to do that. God gives us free will. So by your free will, because you choose to trust in your own goodness, right? And absolutely, I will mute you. Don't worry about it. I got you. Since you asked for it, I appreciate you. I'll give you that. But I'm going to still talk to you anyway. By your works, you cannot be saved. The Pharisees cannot be saved because they believed in their works. They didn't believe in Jesus. They were blaspheming Jesus. You are saved by grace, not by works, brother. So I pray that you walk in peace. I respect the fact that you asked me to mute you because most people don't even ask for that. I just do it on the, on, on the whim of you either being respectful or disrespectful. So the simple fact you was respectful enough to say that, I appreciate that and I'll pray for you. You cannot trust in your works. That's not going to get you into heaven. It is Jesus and Jesus alone. So what is the topic of this video? The fear of the Lord. That this is what the churches don't have today. Especially in the Western Hemisphere. Everybody that's in the West. Churches in the West. All we talk about is once saved, always saved. All we talk about is claim it and name it. All we talk about is where's my blessing? I got to sow a seed in somebody's ministry to get married. You understand? Or you talk about getting raptured up out of here. I need you brothers and sisters to really comprehend your salvation. I need you to really comprehend the situation that you're in. Stop relying on your goodness. It's not going to save you. I don't care how good you are to your kids. I don't care how you good, good you are, faithful you are to your spouse. That's nice that you're faithful to your spouse. The Bible commands you to be faithful to your spouse. But if you do not have Jesus Christ, you are going to hell, not because God wants you to go to hell. You're going to hell because that is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. And God has died on the cross for your sins so that you don't go to hell. But by your free will, if you choose to reject God and don't accept them and get born again, then it's your choice that you're going to hell. Not God, because he already provided the way. He provided the way through his spirit. He provided the way through his son, Jesus Christ. Exactly. Sorry, guys, I got a cold. But um, you said we are all guilty before a holy God. Jesus saves us. Amen. See, the brother gets it. See, the other brother didn't get it. He just want to be arrogant. And that's like. I understand you wanted me to mute you. I didn't really want to, but, you know, you asked for it, so I gave you what you asked for. It's the same thing with God. Because you say, I don't want God, God's going to have to give you what you asked for, which is what? Hell. If you don't want heaven, if you don't want Jesus, you can't go to heaven because that's where he's at. That's his throne room. That's his, that's his home. That's his dominion. Hell is for people who don't believe. So you're given an opportunity in this lifetime right now, brothers and sisters, to accept Jesus Christ. That's not up to me to force that on you. And I'm not going to force that on you. So for you guys to come on here and debate me on my platform about if Jesus Christ is real and Jesus Christ is not real. First off, it, you accepting Jesus Christ is a heart issue. Okay. You accepting Jesus Christ is a heart issue. So if you choose not to accept Jesus Christ, that got nothing to do with me, brother. That got nothing to do with me, sister. That's totally up to you. You just want somebody to put the blame on because you don't want to take no accountability nor responsibility for your life. But in the same breath, you would tell everybody, it's my body's my choice, right? So if it's your body and it's your choice, then it's also your choice to go to hell as well. 
if you don't be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what did the Bible say about your body? It says the body is the temple of the Lord. Did it not say that? So if you're going to sit here and parade your body on social media and say it's my body, it's my choice. I can abort kids. I can do whatever I want. Okay. That's your choice and you're going to have to live with the consequences. Do not blame the devil and do not blame God. It is you. Men have to take accountability. Yes, the devil tempted Eve. But it was also Eve's choice to eat from the tree. It was also Adam's choice to eat from the tree alongside with his wife. Where is the accountability? God could tell you to do one thing. The devil could tell you to do another thing. God created this with free will. You're not factoring that in. So when you talk about once saved, always saved, yes, you can accept Jesus Christ. You are justified by grace. You are justified by the blood. But if you don't abide in him, like what John 15 says, you cannot bear fruit because you're not abiding in him. If you say that Jesus Christ is not the truth, the way, and the life, then the truth is not in you. If you say you're without sin, then you make God out to be a liar and the truth is not what? In you. You say, what if people won't listen if I tell them to repent and live holy? Well, that's not a... Well, sister, your job is to preach the gospel, right? So if you say, if I tell people about to repent and live holy, you did your job. Just like me, I'm doing my job. My job is to come on here, tell them to live holy, tell them to repent, accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. If they choose to act up in the chat room, if they choose to say, I don't believe in your God, oh, let's, let's try another religion. That's a heart issue that has nothing to do with you, sister. So put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment, sister. Dust your feet off. What did Jesus Christ say to the disciples who, when they were supposed to go out into the different places and preach? He said, if they, don't re if they reject you, dust your feet off and go to the next town. Take your peace back with you. It'll be worse for them than Sodom and Gomorrah. And we already know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. So it, it, it behooves you. It is in your best interest that you humble yourself. It is in your best interest that you accept Jesus Christ. Not because we're trying to force our religion on you. It is in your best interest, brothers and sisters. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. To make him the Lord and Savior of your life. To be born again of the water and of the spirit. Why? Because everlasting life means forever. When you leave this life. You have to go into another life. Now, some people may not believe in the afterlife. Now, you got some people who are maybe quote unquote spiritual. They believe that you are, you have multiple past lives. Well, I'm going to tell you something because I used to be in the occult before I turned my life to Christ. So when I was in the occult, I used to practice witchcraft. I used to believe in reincarnation. I used to believe in all of that nonsense. What did the Bible say? It says it's appointed for a man to die once. Then after the judgment. So you only have one life to make. And you have one life to live. And one choice to make. You have an opportunity. One grace. One faith. One God. One Lord. One Savior. You have one life. Within this life you have the choice to choose. You either choose to walk with the world. Or you choose to walk with God. You don't have a do over. There's no do overs. You see what I'm saying? And that's the lie that the enemy is sowing in the seeds in the minds of the world. It says the, the God of this world who is Satan blinds the minds of the unbelievers. Because you want to believe a lie to be the truth, that's why you're being deceived. You see what I'm saying? You say plant the seed of the gospel and move on. Let God water that seed. Amen. My job is to plant the seed. What do you mean, Neil? Just like what the person said in the chat room. A preacher is supposed to plant the seed. It's just the gospel. So when I preach this word, that's me planting the seed. Now, there may be people who can receive that word. And there may be people who will reject that word. The people who reject the word of God are those who have a hardened heart. They don't want nothing to do with God. So you see, it's not the problem is not me, nor is the gospel. The problem is your heart. The problem is your heart. 
Now, let's say if you're receptive to the gospel, you're receptive to the message. Well, the seed has been planted. Now, somebody else might come along in your life and preach the gospel again to you. Now, that's watering the seed. And what happens? God gets the glorification, meaning he gets the increase. Because everything is supposed to glorify God. Our lives are supposed to not be our own anymore. Our lives belong to Christ. Our lives belong to God. Put a one in the chat, guys and ladies, if you understand the assignment. When you give your life to Christ, it is no more I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. I don't live for myself no more. I don't try to plan out my own life no more. I give it to God. That's what it means to be making the Lord the Lord and Savior of your life. Everybody just comes looking for Jesus when they want somebody to save them out of their trouble. But no one don't want to make God the Lord of their life when it comes to what they do in their life. You're like, God, I just want you to save me out of my debt. God, I just want you to save me with my crazy kids. God, I just want you to save me out of this sickness or illness I got. God, I just want you to save me from going to prison. Okay, you'll say all these nice promises to God, but are you keeping it? Are you keeping your end of the bargain? God's like, okay, I helped you with your sickness. I helped you get out of prison. I helped you get out of that messed up relationship. Where is the end of the bargain? I did mine. Where's yours? When you talk to God, you're making a covenant with God. A lot of you guys just honor God with your lips, but not with your heart. You just want God to help you with your situation, but you don't want to give your body as a living sacrifice. You don't want to give your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth, your, your sexual organs, your entire vessel as a living sacrifice of righteousness. You are making your body an instrument of sin and fornication. That's why he calls you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Depart from me. You don't want to hear those words on judgment day. You don't want to hear those words. So I'm trying to save you the, the trouble. That's why we're preaching the gospel. My job is to preach about the kingdom of God, his righteousness, warn you about hell, give you the choice to choose. Do I want to walk with Jesus or do I want to continue to live in sin? Because you cannot be where God is at if you're living a lukewarm lifestyle. You cannot be where God is at if you're living a lie. He said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. He didn't say I'm the lie. He says the father of lies is Satan. He said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. He didn't say there's many ways to Christ. He said there's only one way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through who? Me, Jesus Christ. He ain't say Buddha. He ain't say Allah. He ain't say none of these other false gods. He ain't say none of these other TikTokers on here. Not even me. I am not the way, but I know the way, Jesus Christ. So if you're watching my, you watching my videos, you're on this platform watching, right now watching me, yeah, that's good to hear from a messenger of God, but it's also saying test every spirit. Because not everybody who's a messenger could be a messenger of God. You could be a messenger of evil. You could be a messenger of self. You, you could sit here and promote God, but you're really not promoting God. You're promoting yourself. So test every spirit, brothers and sisters. And that's including me. You said... To be saved, one must believe and trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. Let's look at that real quick. Because there might be somebody in the chat room who, who might need to hear that. So I appreciate you for putting the scriptures in the chat room. Give me a second. Right? So for those who are in the chat room who have not accepted Jesus Christ, I need you to put a one in the chat room. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior... Put a one in the chat room, right? And I'm going to read what the person has put in the, in the chat room, okay? So it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which you have received, and whereon do you stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Let's read that one more time. Let's read that one more time. 
It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. What gospel? The gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved. So how are you saved? You are saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says faith comes by what? Hearing the word of God. So if you hear this word and you do not reject it and you accept it and you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are saved. It says by which ye are saved if, pay attention, if ye keep in memory, do not just be hearers of the word. But what? Doers. Say, so if you be hearers of the word, you're deceiving yourself. So you can hear this word, but if you don't do that, you're deceiving yourself. He says, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. How many people have believed in vain who believe that they're Christians, but they don't live the, they don't live the Christian lifestyle? They say, I'm a Christian. They wear a, 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 a cross on their neck. They might have cross earrings. They might profess that they're Christian. They may profess their denomination. But their lifestyles are opposing their belief system. Meaning that you believed in vain. So this is why Apostle Paul says examine your hearts. Examine yourself to see if you of the faith. Right now let's read verse 3. It says, for I delivered unto you first of all that. Let me say that one more time. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas and then of the twelve. And then after that he was seen above five hundred brethren at once. Of whom the greater part remains unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. So that means that even though you may have a relationship with God, there's also that possibility that you may fall back to sleep. What does the Bible tell us? Be sober minded and vigilant. Why? Because the devil walks around like a primal lion seeking whom he may devour. When you go back to a lifestyle of sin, you're going back to sleep. That Remember the movie The Matrix? When Neo was presented by Morpheus a choice, red pill, blue pill. So the gospel is the red pill. You walk in holiness. You walk in Christ. You allow Christ to dictate your life. You allow, you, you, you allow the Holy Spirit to guide and lead you into all the truth. Meaning that's walking in the spirit. Blue pill is I go back to sin. Even though I heard about the gospel, I believe in vain. Because I don't practice what I preach. I can say I love you God. But in my heart I'm, 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 I'm all for sin. You go right back to sleep. Because sleep is connected to death. And what is sin? Sin is connected to death. It says the wages of sin is what? Death. So every time that you guys live a lifestyle of sin. You're living a lifestyle of death. You're living a lifestyle of drunkenness. You're living a lifestyle of lies and confusion. That's why he says, come out of her, my people. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as long as you are abiding in Christ, you are renewing your mind every single day. You are given the grace to renew your mind. You have to crucify your flesh daily. Put a one in the chat, brothers and sisters. I got 12 people in here, so I'd expect all you guys to answer this. Put a one in the chat if you guys receive the assignment, if you understand what I'm saying. It's not enough just to say I believe. How do we know if you believe? How do you know if you believe? How do you know if you believe? Faith without works is dead. Your faith is your conviction. If you don't act on your convictions, then it's, it's false. So I'll give you an example. <laughs> Right? Let's say I confess Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior. But if I don't go through with a water baptism, right? That see the water baptism doesn't save me. My faith saves me. My faith in Christ saves me. But the water baptism is an outward representation or public announcement of my faith that I confessed. So when we go through a water baptism, it represents in a symbolic See what I'm saying? 
It goes back to the spiritual. The water of baptism is symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when that guy dumps you in the water and lifts you back up, it's supposed to be symbolic of you dying to your flesh and becoming a new creature in Christ. So when you do the physical act, it's an action that applies to your confession, which is faith with works. So when it says faith without works is dead, you just can't confess your faith. You have to apply it. Another example. I use baptism as an example, but I'm going to use another example. Noah. Right? Remember Noah? When God told Noah he needed to build an ark because he was going to flood the earth with a flood. If, if Noah didn't believe, he would have never built the ark. That means all humanity would have been lost. Noah acted in the conviction of what Lord put on his heart. Noah acted on the commandments of what God told him to do. Even though he didn't understand what was going to happen in the future, Noah acted in faith. That's why it was imputed onto him by the apostle Paul. What he said, he said, it was imputed onto Paul as righteousness, his faith. So because of Noah's faith in God, that's what saved them. From the flood. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. So your action coupled with your faith. Your belief in God. Being obedient is what saves you. So when God said if you love me. You will keep my commandments. Meaning you must be obedient. You must be obedient unto death. You must be obedient to crucifying this flesh daily. You must be obedient to walking in the spirit. When the Holy Spirit tells you not to come on social media. When the Holy Spirit tells you not to go certain places. When the Holy Spirit tells you to stop doing certain things. Of course we know we're not perfect. We cannot fulfill the law in the flesh. The, the, the flesh is weak. Right? It says the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. The only way we can walk in perfection is walking in the spirit. When we walk in the spirit, we're not under the law. We're under the grace. So how do you activate grace? By being obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The unctions of the Holy Spirit. The nudges of the Holy Spirit. The convictions of the Holy Spirit. When we act, in, we, when we act on those convictions with the Holy Spirit convicts us about. Because remember, the Lord says he corrects who... He said he loved those who he corrects. So if, if the Lord is trying to correct you... And you go against the correction. Are you a child of grace? Are you a child of God? Or are you a child of disobedience? See, it's simple. We, we have to be obedient to God. Even if we don't understand certain things that's going on in our lives. We have to be obedient to God. Even though we may not understand certain things that's going to happen in the future. See, this is what, this is what the devil did to us. He expects us to believe only after we see it, right? So we like, I don't want to believe you, brother, unless I got proof. I don't want to believe you, brother. I don't want to believe you, sister, unless I see proof. But that is the false way of believing. That's not believing. That's an atheist mindset, right? That's the ways of the world. Oh, I don't believe you unless I see it. Well, guess what? The difference between... Atheism and faith is Atheism will say hey I gotta see it in order to believe it But faith is like If you believe Then God will reveal it to you So when you start to believe And you be obedient to that belief And be obedient to that conviction Then the Lord will reveal to you Step by step by step Because what is what the scripture says it says a righteous man's steps Are ordered by the Lord God's not going to reveal to you step 10 If you still at step 1 He needs you to trust and believe That he can get you through step 1 Right The promise is at step 10 But you need to follow through With obedience with step 1 You can't skip from step 1 To step 10 you can't expect God to bring you step 10 when you still at step 1. He wants you to trust and believe and be obedient to step 1. What is he telling you to do with step 1? Whatever 
Whatever God is knocking at your door of your heart with at this moment right now is step one. So if he's telling you to stop doing certain things, that's step one. So you need to stop doing that. But when you stop doing that, you do that from a place of trust. You put that from a place of belief. So when he, when he tells us to stop sinning, when he tells us, okay, sin no more, that is impossible to do in the flesh. Why? Because we are born sinners. We were born in sin. That is the nature of the flesh. The nature of the flesh is sin. But if he tells us to sin no more, that goes into the realm of impossibility. So the realm of impossibility is where the Holy Spirit dwells. That is the realm. That's the domain. That's the dominion of the Holy Spirit. So if you're going to trust in God, we got to step into the realm of what? Impossibility. So if we step into the realm of impossibility, we don't know what is to, we don't know if it's possible. That's why it's called impossible. But what did the Bible says? It says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let's go to Romans 8 real quick. Let's go to Romans 8 real quick. It says without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? Let me see. Yeah, let's go to Romans 8, verse 7 and 8. It says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. You cannot please God if you're, ap if you're operating out of unbelief. The first, I would say this to all unbelievers. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we're not expecting you to overcome all of your sins. We're not expecting you to repent for all of your sins. All right? The only sin that you need to repent of is unbelief. And the reason why I'm saying this, it comes from a place of grace. A lot of people will preach on here to people who don't even have the Holy Spirit. They'll preach to people who are spiritually dead and tell them to repent of all of their sins. And how could a dead person who is spiritually dead repent of anything? They're not, in a, they're not even capable of doing that. You could tell that to somebody who is born again. You could tell that to somebody who is a Christian. You could tell them, man, you need to repent of these things because now you have the power. How? Because you have the Holy Spirit. You making excuses. Well, you saying I'm struggling with sin. Well, I, of course, because that's part of the warfare. But as a Christian, you are given power and authority from the Holy Spirit to conquer your sin. So if you're not applying your faith in a practical way, then you're allowing the enemy to conquer you. So there's no excuses for a Christian who has the Holy Spirit versus an unbeliever who does not have the Holy Spirit. We show grace to the non-believer because we're like, okay, we know that you don't know. We know that you don't have God. So only thing we need you to do is repent. Repent of what? Your unbelief. Your unbelief of who and what? Your unbelief that Jesus Christ is not God. You see what I'm saying? You believe that Jesus Christ is not God, but we're trying to get you to believe or we need you to repent, right? We need you to repent of your unbelief towards God. You say that Jesus Christ is not God, but we're saying the Bible says Jesus Christ is God and he died on the cross for your sins. He came in the flesh. It says that the word became flesh and dwelt among men. It says that he was born of a virgin birth. He died and resurrected on the third day. He died for all of our sins. If you change your mind on this belief, then you can be saved. So when you confess the sinner's prayer as an unbeliever, you recognize that you are a sinner. Because as an unbeliever, you don't believe that you're a sinner. You believe that you're righteous. You believe that you're good. You believe that you don't need nobody's help. You believe that you could do it all by yourself. Well, the Bible says that all is fall short of the glory of God. All are sinners. He says, by grace you are saved and not by works that any man should boast. You are saved by confessing your faith. You are saved by confessing that you are a sinner. You are saved by confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. 
when you are able to do the impossible. So for an unbeliever who do not have the spirit of God to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that means the Holy Spirit is now imparted onto you. Because anybody that does not have the Holy Spirit cannot confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's an impossible thing for them to do. It's an impossible thing for an atheist to accept Jesus Christ. Why? Because their belief system make it impossible for them to believe. They don't even believe that Jesus Christ even exists. So you, when we present information to a non-believer, when we present the, the gospel that is planting the seed, that's my job. That's anybody's job on here who is preaching the gospel. We're supposed to plant the seed. You're supposed to receive it. And when you receive it, that means you receive the salvation. You have received the word of God that can save your life. And that's why it says your faith has saved you. Right? Your faith in Christ saves you. Not your faith in science. Not your faith in Buddha. Not your faith in Satanism. Your faith in Jesus and Jesus alone. That is the only thing that could save a non-believer. And he must act. He or she must act. On that conviction. So when they confess that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. And that they are a sinner. Now they must act on that conviction. How, they, how would they act on that conviction? They will act on that conviction by getting a water baptism. In obedience to the faith that they just confessed. Put a one in the chat if you guys understand it. So if you are watching this video. Put a one in the chat if you understand the assignment. Especially non-believers. Right? Because a lot of people will put a yoke on non believers, expecting them to confess every single sin and be living a holy, sanctified life when you guys are Christians for years who live in fornication, live in sin, and go to church and act like you don't do nothing wrong. You want to put a yoke of bondage on someone who don't even know who God is. And expect them to live godly. They're spiritually dead. The only way they can repent. And the only way they can change. Is through the Holy Spirit. And if they don't have the Holy Spirit. They cannot change. And the same thing applies to you. But to see. You're going to have a worse judgment. Christians are going to have a worse judgment. Because they have known the truth. And they rejected the truth. How? Because they didn't live what they preach. They didn't crucify this flesh daily. They just heard lip service. They just heard the word, but they never did the word. See the difference? So as a Christian, we're hold to a higher standard than the world. We'll hold to a higher standard than the world. And that's why there's no fear of the Lord in the church. Because everybody that go to church feel that they can live however they want to live. Oh, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. We're saved by grace. But you're abusing your grace. You're using your grace as a license to sin. You're using your grace as a license to go back into the world. You're using your, your, your grace as a, as a license to justify your life over oh, struggling, brother. You got to have mercy, brother. You miss me with that. What did Jesus Christ say? Sin no more. That doesn't mean that you're not going to stumble in your walk. But when he says sin no more, be obedient to sin no more. How do you be obedient to sin no more? Trust in God, ability. Trust, stop trusting in your own ability. Trust in God's ability to stop you from sinning. So put a one in the chat, guys, if you understand the assignment. You need to trust in God's ability to stop you from sinning. Not your own ability. You don't have it in you to stop sinning. This is where you're going to do the impossible. This is where you take that leap of faith. This is where you take that leap of faith. Okay God. I don't know how to stop sinning. God I don't know how to stop cursing. God I don't know how to stop fornicating. But I know that your son has done it for us. He's shown his example. He's laying his life down for us. So I'm going to trust and be obedient to something that I don't understand. Even if I don't understand, I'm going to believe it anyway. And I'm going to do it anyway. And as you do what God tells you to do, then the pathway 
starts to open up. So you go from step one, now you're at step two. He, he, he tells you to do something else that requires faith. So when you're at step two, now you, you got to do another sacrifice. You have to do another act of faith. Right? Based on that conviction. Once you move past that, then you get to step three, step four, step five, and then you get until you get all the way to the end. That's why it says, those who endure to the end, the same shall be what? Saved. Because this walk is a race. This walk is a battle. This walk is staying continual repentance. Not just one time repentance. You're not going to repent once one time. Maybe in the beginning when you gave your life to Christ, you repented for unbelief. But then God is going to start telling you to let go of certain things in your life. God is going to start telling you to let go of certain practices you have in your life. Certain mindsets. You have to let go of all of that in belief and act in convictions to those beliefs. So when you get rid of idols out of your home. When you get, out, get rid of people out of your life. And God is saying, yo, you got to get rid of this girl. Or you got to get rid of this guy. You have to act in belief that he's going to do the rest. If you don't let go of these things in belief, then it's unbelief. And that's a sin. So the sin that unbelievers must repent of in order to be saved is the unbelief of Jesus Christ being God. Right? What um, Christians must do once they get saved, they must repent of their lifestyle of sinning. And that's a, that's the, that goes into the second part of salvation, which is what? Sanctification. So sanctification is the renewing of the mind. Sanctification is the consecration. Sanctification is the being separate and set apart. So God starts to gradually remove sin out of your life. So everything that God is removing out of your life, you remove it in belief and conviction and obedience. Put a one in the chat, brothers and sisters. Because I'm about to end this video. Put a one in the chat room if you understand the assignment. Got 12 people in the chat room. I need to see the ones in the chat room. If you understand the assignment, put a one in the chat room. All right. I got ones. Keep it going, man. But um, I need you guys to really comprehend this. Your walk is required obedience to that faith. To that conviction. If you do not act on that conviction. Then your faith is vain. It's not true. It's not. It's just lip service. Oh God I loved you. Oh God I will die for you. If you say you want to die for Christ. Expect to die for Christ. If you say I love Christ. Expect to sacrifice for Christ. If you say God I made you my Lord and Savior. Expect to make him the Lord and Savior of your life. And everything in your life is going to challenge your thoughts. Everything in your life is going to challenge your declaration of your faith. God honors your declaration. God honors your worship if it's genuine. Now, worship might not be just, oh, I'm listening to worship music. Worship is with your mind, body, spirit, and soul. Everything is an act of worship towards God. Your obedience is an act of worship towards God. Your ability to yield to the spirit is an, is an act of obedience and worship towards God. You denying yourself is an act of worship towards God. That's what it is to walk with God. That's what it is to walk in the spirit. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. Right? But this is where we have to trust in God and allow him to guide our steps. So let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, I thank you for allowing me and my brothers to congregate today. Father God, I pray that all of those are in the chat room and those who will watch this video on the replay receive this message in spirit and truth. Father God, I pray that they receive the message. The seed has been planted. That you will water the seed and add the increase, Father God. I pray that all my brothers not just be hearers of the word, but doers as well. Not deceiving themselves. We decree and declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Put an amen in the chat room, brothers and sisters, if you have received this prayer. And I need you guys to go in peace. Check out the website at www.footworkministries.com. If you have not added me as a friend on TikTok, you need to do so. All right. Um, 
Also, add me on YouTube. So anytime I do a live video, I usually put up the replay on the YouTube. So you might want to check this video out later on on my YouTube. So check out the YouTube. I have other lives that I've did previously on there. Also, check out the Footwork Ministries podcast at SoundCloud, where you guys can listen to any audio that I've done pertaining to prayers. If you guys need prayers, I've definitely did a whole bunch of recordings. You guys can use that to help you with your spiritual warfare and all that. All right? I'll catch you guys and ladies in the next video later on. Peace.